Two of the most important challenges facing network operators right now are related to playing their part in sustainable development and meeting environmental goals, and the need to build broadband access networks that are as future-proof as possible. So wouldn't it be great if you could address both of these challenges at the same time? Well, to find out how that can be done, I'm talking today with Stefan van Hassel, CTO of Fix Networks at Nokia. Stefan, great to talk to you again. So uh, do broadband networks have a role in helping society at large meet the environmental goals to which governments all over the world are committing? The telecom industry in general and broadband networks have a critical role in helping society to become more sustainable. There really is no green without digital. There's obvious example, broadband networks enable teleworking, uh, which basically takes cars off the road. Uh, but equally, digitalization of industry and society is key to continue to reduce waste and to become more re resource efficient. Uh, there's a couple of examples. Uh, industry 4.0, uh, you know, industries are striving to become more energy efficient through connectivity and automating processes and, in and, and industrial processes. Smart cities can monitor traffic on the roads and they can manage traffic to avoid and reduce congestion. Utility companies can use smart metering to, to measure energy consumption and to predict energy consumption so they can really tweak the power output of the power plants. The really good news is that telecom and broadband have the potential to impact up to 15% of the global CO2, friend, uh, CO2 footprint through all the industries that we, that we can help become more sustainable. But there's a challenge. All of this also requires more capacity. And just to give you an idea, the own footprint of the telecommunication industry, of the ICT industry, is roughly 2% in terms of CO2 footprint. To give you an idea, that's similar to the airline industry. So the real challenge that we face over the next couple of years is to decouple that capacity growth, that demand for more speed, from the energy growth. In other words, we really need to get down the amount of watts that we need per bit of data transmitted. Now, fiber is dominating fixed broadband rollout plans these days. Uh, what role can fiber play in these environmental efforts? Fiber is really a fantastic technology. It's far more energy efficient than legacy copper-based technologies like DSL or, or cable. Why? Well, it's, a, it's incredibly efficient to send light down a very narrow channel. The fiber is really the width of a human hair, so it's an, it's an efficient medium. But also, fiber networks will last for generations. You know, once you've installed them, once you've rolled them out, that fiber will be there for decades. And during its lifetime, you can actually continue to increase the speeds by upgrading the electronics on, on both sides. And because of this unlimited capacity, what you're really building is not just a fiber to the home network, a residential broadband net network. You're actually building a fiber infrastructure, a single network that can be used for multiple services, residential, business services, and that can also be used by different service providers. So it's a single infrastructure, an open network that can be used for everything and by everyone. An interesting data point is provided by Heert Standard, the CTO of Proximus here in Belgium. They've been rolling out fiber for a couple of years now, and he stated that because of this fiber rollout, they actually achieved 75% energy savings compared to the previous generation of the network. That's quite impressive. Wow, that, that really is an amazing stat from Proximus there. Um, but what does this all mean for fixed wireless access, or FWA, which is getting a lot of attention these days? Where does that fit into the mix? Another important angle of sustainability is digital inclusion. And fiber, while it's the most future-proof technology, will never reach every home because you have to dig up the streets, you have to install that fiber cabling to every location. If we truly want to bridge the digital divide, which means making sure everyone gets access to e-health and e-learning, we must get broadband to everyone. And the one thing we've learned in this industry over the past 20 years is that there's no single best solution. There's no silver bullet you need to be able to select the right tool for the job. In many cases, it will be fiber to the home. In other cases, it will be upgrades of DSL and cable networks. And fixed wireless access, as a new addition to the, to the toolkit, will actually play a critical role. It's going to be a fantastic complement to fiber to the home. It gives you a very fast speed of deployment and a fast time of market. It gives you a lot of flexibility. So the combination of fiber to the home and fixed wireless access will be key to connecting everyone and everything. Okay. 
Now, what is Nokia doing to reduce the energy consumption of broadband access networks? One of the big steps we've taken a couple of years ago was to start building our own chipsets. One of the reasons to invest in that chipset was to, to, to build for faster speeds. You know, we went from two and a half gig to 10 gig to 25 gig. But another design criteria, another main design criteria was to achieve power uh, savings. And we've achieved that. So our, our latest generation of ch chipsets is actually 50% more energy efficient than previous generations of technology. But we also designed that chipset to support more than residential. For example, we focused on low latency. If you want to use that residential network for more than just residential, for example, for business services or for mobile backhaul, you need to be able to meet the quality of service requirements of those other services. And we've built that into, into that chipset. So that means that you can build this chipset. It's going to give you higher and higher speeds. It's going to support more than just residential services but it's also going to cut power consumption by 50%. And are there any other ways in which the environmental impact of networking products can be improved, for example, by adopting circular economy models? Indeed, it's about more than power consumption. Uh, we are now also designing for recyclability. Uh, every year we ship tens of millions of CPEs, fiber modems, fixed wireless access modems. And in our latest designs, we actually focus on recyclability. So we only use a few major components, which means that these CPEs become easier to assemble, but also easier to disassemble. And it means that the white outer shell can be recycled separately from the black framework and from the, PC and from the PCB port. But we also started looking at the packaging. Uh, we've moved to 100% recyclable packaging, purely cardboard and paper-based. We managed to achieve the same level of protection we actually get a smaller volume, so we can get more boxes on, on a truck and more boxes on a, on a ship, all while being 100% recyclable. And this is no mean feat to achieve. We've actually won the Red Dot, Red Dot Best of the Best Award for this design system. Now, Ray, if you think about it, as an industry, what we've achieved over the past 20 years is actually quite remarkable. Not only did we manage to connect everyone, but we've also increased the speeds from megabits per second in the early DSL days to 10 gig, 25 gig per second today on fiber. We've, we've already started work on 50 gigabit per second. We've shown that you can do a, a 100 gigabit per second. There's really no end in sight. But the really cool thing is that with this 64x increase in speed, at the same time, we've actually reduced the power consumption by more than 30%. If it bring the two factors together, it means that we've been able to reduce the power consumption per bit with a factor of more than 100. And there's really not many industries that can show that kind of track record. Yeah, no, these really are great advances. And I know from speaking to network operators that having more sustainable and faster and greater capacity broadband networks and meeting environmental goals is right at the top of the strategic list for them these days. So uh, great advances there. Stefan, great to talk to you as always. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Ray.